Hello everyone and welcome to the YouTube channel of Being ACCA. This is Tushita Gupta, ACC Affiliate and in this video we are solving an FM pass paper question. You can see this has been a question which was there in the September-December 23 attempt. Uh, so let's get started. This is Poloro Company. Uh, with the first requirement that I can see over here, it's talking about risk, uncertainty. And if I just have a quick look at the information that's given, I can see, I can gauge that it's, an, it's a question that perhaps may be based on the investment appraisal uh, unit of my syllabus. So uh, over here, I have to discuss the difference between risk and uncertainty in context of the investment decisions. So let's have a glance at the case study and then we will begin answering uh, the requirements. So Poloro company produces household electrical goods for its home country market and for markets in neighboring countries. Poloro company is planning to make a major investment in new production facilities in order to produce an upgraded model of its cooker. Poloro company's finance director has assigned probabilities to a number of possible sales volumes of this new model based on Poloro company's previous experience of launching product upgrades. He has calculated annual expected values for sales for the four-year time period over which the investment will be assessed. However, an, after a number of years of economic strong economic growth, Poloro company's home country and its neighbors appear likely to enter a period of recession, meaning that consumers may be less willing to spend money on new kitchen goods so the initial investment is going to cost them 39 million dollars the finance director has assumed that there will be zero realizable value at the end of four years working capital again can be ignored so no scrap value no working capital expected volumes of sales are given to us expected contribution throughout the four years is going to be 200 dollars per cooker so no sales price no variable cost simply you have been given the contribution this will not be affected by the rate of inflation incremental fixed costs excluding depreci uh, depreciation are expected to be 2.5 million dollars in year one they will increase by the rate of inflation in each of the years two to four which are predicted to be as follows uh, in year two it's six percent four percent and three uh, three percent for the remaining years so poloro company pays a corporation tax of 25 percent per year one year in areas no tax allowable depreciation is available on the investment expenditure poloro company currently uses 11 percent as the after-tax discount rate to appraise investments like this one of the other directors has commented that he thinks the level of contribution that the finance director has assumed is too high. So let's highlight probably we might, uh, you know, need to come back to it later. He has also wondered with the economic uncertainty, the cost of capital should be higher. The finance director has said that this will prepare, uh, that he will prepare sensitivity calculations showing in relative terms the level of change in contribution and discount rate that would produce a nil net present value. He will assume that the contribution will be lower by the same percentage each year. Another director has stated that she has heard probability analysis can be helpful in decision making and wonders if the same will be, uh, you know, if this will be the same as sensitivity analysis that the finance director is going to prepare. So on my left, uh, right hand side of the screen, I have the very first requirement which wants me to discuss the difference between the risk and uncertainty. So conceptually, we all know we have studied this that risk is where there are different possible outcomes and you know the probabilities of those outcomes. So different possible outcomes whose probabilities probabilities can be ascertained and this may be due to historic records. So because I have data collected for a long period of time, so using that data, I will be able to arrive at the probabilities. And now we, if we talk about the uncertainty, uncertainty basically is a condition where you have different possible outcomes, where you do not know what different those, you know, what could be those possible outcomes and you do not even know what probabilities do these outcomes have. So it is not possible to assign probabilities to Two different outcomes. Probabilities. Two different outcomes. So 
this is how you have explained this over here and then uh, you can mention because you know we saw in the case study that your economic conditions are going to change and there's a recession that can possibly come in the country where poloro company is operating so the finance director may have taken an in uh, you know incorrect approach when calculating the expected values of sales and you know the past results may not be relevant for calculating the probability because you know we are entering into two times which are different from the times which have been there previously so this is how you can conclude that uh, uh due to recession due to uh we can quote probably the line from here here so due to poloro company's home country uh you know likeliness due to the likeliness of poloro companies home country to enter a recession past trends using of past trends using of past trends to predict future to instead of saying to predict you can say to um assign probabilities to future sales volumes could lead to errors in estimates so this is how you can apply it to the scenario as well now we move ahead to the second requirement where the first part is a five marker part which wants me to calculate the nominal npv and then comment on the financial acceptability then part 2 wants me to calculate the sensitivity of the npv to a change in level of contribution and then sensitivity to a change in discount rate so this is all that we have to calculate over here 5 plus 3 gives you 8 8 plus 3 gives you 11 marks so 11 marks of numericals that you have over here now uh, let's first calculate the npv over here so i can put that this is part b and first one at that so i have to calculate the npv first of all so i will roughly lay down my format here i can say that this is my net present value and then i can begin with the years here starting with year 0 1 2 3 4 and then 5 because tax is payable one year in areas so first figure i'm going to start off is with the contribution because there's no sales there's no variable cost that has been provided to me so the contribution is going to be 200 per cooker so 200 multiplied by 60000 is the number of units that i'm going to be selling in the first year all right then i have 150000 as the number of units multiplied by 200 per cooker again 200 multiplied by 140000 and then in the fourth year it's 80000 multiplied by 200 per cooker so with this i have arrived at the contributions that i will be having in the years that uh, this project will be there for now the next thing that i need to take is going to be the fixed costs so let's take the fixed costs so with respect to that for the first year it's given to be 2.5 million dollars so this is how i can take 2.5 million dollars over here and then for the remaining years it's mentioned that there's going to be an inflation that is applicable on this amount so this amount multiplied by 1.06 and this inflation is valid for the second year so i'm raising it to the power of 2 uh excluding depreciation they will increase by the rate of inflation in each of the years <clears throat> my apology uh and your inflation rate is given to be over here 6% per year so with this you will be arriving at the inflation for the very first year 
and now at this amount you're going to have an inflation of 1.04 And then for the next one, you're going to have an inflation of 1.03. So with this, we are through with the fixed costs calculations. And then the next thing that I'm going to take over here is going to be my, uh, you know, I'll have my operating cash flows before tax. So I have my operating cash flows before tax. It's going to be this value plus this value again, because I have the uh, fixed costs already as a negative figure. So here are all of my operating cash flows before tax. Now I have my tax which is payable at the rate of 25%. So on uh, the first year, the money that I earn in the first year, my tax is going to be paid in the second year because tax is payable one year in areas. So minus 25% of the cash flow that I have in the first year. So I can drag this formula till the end so that I will have my tax payments for the rest of the years as well. So this is how I've arrived at my tax payments. Then my next thing is going to be the cash flows after tax. So what am I going to be left with when I've made the tax payments? So it's going to be this plus this figure. Tax payments are already on negative. So I copy paste this formula to the remainder of the cells also. With this, I arrive at my cash flows after tax. Then uh, there's no working capital that I need to account for, no tax allowable depreciation. So I'm pretty much done over here, no scrap value. But one thing that I need to take is definitely my initial investment over here. Initial investment is mentioned to be $39 million, putting it as a negative figure. All right, so this is my initial investment gone out. Now I can have my net cash flows. So it's going to be this figure plus this figure. Copy this to the remainder of the cells also. So you have your net cash flows. Now on these cash flows, I will calculate my NPV. So I'll use the NPV formula equals NPV. Open the brackets, the rate of discount, I think, yes, 11% was given. So I put in the discount rate, select my values here, 1 to 5, close this bracket and then add the initial investment. Uh, you know, this is subtracting the initial investment. I'm putting a plus sign because I've already put a minus over here. So with this, I have my NPV all worked out. So uh, with this, you would think we are done with the first part, but we are actually left with the comment portion of it. So we will leave a comment over here. It's good to format it as a currency. So this is how it will look like if you format it in the currency format. Now our comment is going to be since the project has a positive NPV, Poloro company should accept the project. So this is how you will leave a comment and now you have completed the first part. Now moving towards the calculation of the second part where, have, where we have to find out the sensitivity towards the uh, change in the level of contribution. So over here we'll take the contribution, we'll convert it to a post-tax contribution and then we will find out the present value of the contribution and then we will have the sensitivity of the same. So let us bring the values from above 1, 2, 3 and 4 for the 4 years, the contribution and even for the 5th year because the tax liability is going to go there. So let's first bring our contribution figures this value. I hope dragging should work. Right. So these are going to be my contributions. Right. These are my contributions. Now I need to subtract tax liability from this. Tax liability is going to be at the rate of 25%. So minus 25% of this value over here. Copy paste to all of the uh, 
years that you are having the calculation for then you have your post tax or after tax contribution so you have it as this value plus this value so you can copy paste this to the remainder and with this you have your post tax contribution now you need the present values so the npv is going to be equals to npv 11 percent and then select all of the values that you have over here and you hit enter with this you have this figure as your contribution and then the next thing that we are going to need over here is going to be you know we will take the npv divide this with the present value of our contribution so sensitivity is going to be your npv which is this figure divided by your uh, uh, for, uh, you know the present value of your contribution so you can say this is pv of contribution now you can convert this to a percentage format and with this you have your answer. Now we are done with the second part. Let's move to the third part where we need to calculate the sensitivity of the project's NPV to a change in the discount rate. So whenever you are talking about the discount rate, you're basically required to find out the NPV over here. So this is part three, calculating the IRR. So it's going to be equals IRR. You select all of your values right from year zero to the last year, close your brackets and you hit enter. With this, you will have your IRR all worked out, convert it to the percentage format and you will have your answer. So with this, we are done with the B part in totality. Let us move towards the very last part, which is part C, where we have to compare and contrast the sensitivity analysis and probability analysis as methods of assisting investment decisions when there is more than one possible outcome. So basically, because, you know, there was this director who was thinking that uh, probability analysis is the same as sensitivity analysis. So you have to compare and contrast. You have to give out, uh, you know, uh, how these methods are different from each other. So firstly, talking about uh, these methods briefly, when you talk about sensitivity analysis, it gives you, you know, looking at the level of change that is going to be there if, uh, you know, uh, the expect uh, in your expected outcome, if there is a change in any one variable. So like we found that, uh, you know, we found out the sensitivity towards the contribution towards the cost of capital. So how much should the cost of capital rise so that your NPV becomes zero? That is what your sensitivity analysis tells you. Then if you speak about probability analysis, this basically gives you the likelihood, the chances that different outcomes will take place or will happen. So if you talk about, so this was briefly about the description of the two methods. This was the description of the methods. Then you will also give about the likelihood of outcomes. So basically sensitivity analysis does not take into account the probability of that outcome from happening. But your probability analysis shows you how likely, uh, you know, that outcome will be, which will change your decision. So how, how much is the probability that NPV will be negative? So this is how probability analysis helps you with the likelihood whereas sensitivity analysis does not take into account other uh, probabilities then the next thing if you talk about the number of variables so as far as your uh, sensitivity analysis is con uh, you know concerned you're only talking about how much will your final outcome change if you're changing one variable at a time? But when you are talking about probability analysis, you can change more than one variable at a time by combining their probabilities. And you can also allow for the probabilities of different, uh, you know, variables changing being interdependent because, you know, uh, one thing is linked to other. No two variables are independent of each other. So uh, sensitivity analysis only changes one variable at a time, but with probability analysis, you, you will be able to change multiple variables at the same time. Then if you talk about the decision-making aspect, which one should you be using for decision-making? 
first is going to be you you say that sensitivity analysis does not give you a clear cut decision rule whether or not you should be going ahead with the project it gives you you know the proportion like by how much a variable should change before you have a negative npv so it does not tell you whether you should go ahead or not it simply gives you the amount by which the variable should change for the project to have a zero NPV. So over here, whoever is taking the decision, they will have to subjectively decide on their own whether this change uh, you know, will be too small or too big. Uh, will, will it affect your decision or not? But if you talk about probability analysis, they, they give you an expected NPV, which can then help you with a simple decision rule that you can accept the project if the NPV is positive. However, if uh, you know the decision maker is also concerned about the dispersal of results, that means how much the actual outcome can vary uh, from the predicted outcome, then probability analysis also does not give you a very easy decision rule. Probability analysis simply uh, you know, gives you the probability of the loss. But again, over here also, decision maker will have to decide whether the probability is small or is it big probability, depending upon how much risky, uh, you know, decisions they make. So uh, if you talk about, uh, you know, a risk analysis where you're also using standard deviations to measure how volatile your outcomes are, that can, uh, you know, uh, help you to make better decisions. So this is how you will uh, firstly begin with a description of the methods. Then you speak about the likelihood of the outcomes. And then you talk about the number of variables. And then finally about the decision making aspect. With this, we are through with this question. I hope that this was useful. Thank you for watching.